This is section 10.5, which is area and arc length and polar coordinates. So the area and polar coordinates theorem says if f is continuous and non-negative on the interval a, b, where the difference between these two values is between 0 and 2 pi, then the area of the region bounded by the graph r equals f of theta between the radial lines theta equal to alpha and theta equal to beta is given by this formula. So one half um, the integral of f of theta squared between alpha and beta d theta or one half r squared d theta. Okay. So for example, one, it says find the area of r of four sine three theta for one petal only. Okay. Now just for a quick reference for the petals, when you're talking about petals of, of, a, of a polar function, um, usually the petals occur within um, pi fourths of a unit. So normally we have about four petals or five petals or even three petals, but you can usually get one entire petal within a, a pi over four. So what I typically do is if this is just theta, then you will take your increments in terms of pi over four. However, if it is from, um, and this should have, well, the distance has to be greater than zero. Um, if we take, um, three theta to be pi over four, then that means theta will be pi over 12 if I divide both sides by three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my theta and I'm gonna go in increments of pi over 12. And what I wanna do is I wanna keep finding values until I can get to two pi over 12 is pi over six, three pi over 12 is pi over four, 4 pi over 12 is pi over 3. Um, 5 pi over 12 is just pi over 12. So we'll see how far we have to go. What we want to see is whatever value we get for the first theta. Oh, we forgot theta equal to 0. So whatever we get for the first value, we want to see where it gets to that same value. And you can graph it if you want to, but I just typically like to see where I get the same value. So, um, if I plug these in here, r would be 4 sine of 0, r would be 4 sine of pi over 12, because 3 times pi over 12 is going to give me pi over 4, r equals 3 times pi over 6 will give me 4 sine of pi over 2, um, 4 and then times that by three, we'll get sine of three pi over four. And then we'll get sine of just pi when we multiply that by three. Okay, I'll wait here. I'll write it, but let's see what we get. That would be five pi over four. So sine of zero is zero. So this is going to be 0. Then sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. But this 2 will reduce with this, leaving me with just 2 square root of 2. Sine of pi halves is going to be 1. Um, sine of 3 pi halves is going to be square root of 2 over 2. Sine of pi is going to be zero. So I get zero. And so you see how where I started, I ended up, right? Now, I typically don't draw this, but if you want to draw it, you could. So here you have zero and zero. So you didn't go any radius out and you didn't go any angle um, counterclockwise. Here, square root of two over two. What is that value? Square root of 2 
over 2, I get 0.7. So if this is 1, 0.7 is about here maybe. And then we're going to go pi 12 units. So very small amount. You're not going to go all the way to pi force, right? It's a very small increment. Then 4, 2, or 2, 3, 4 units to the right. And then pi 6. So maybe a little bit more than pi 12. Then square root of 2 over 2 again. Oh, I typed in the wrong number. That's what it is. 2 square root of 2. I'm typing in the fraction instead of 2 times the square root of 2. Ah, so that should be, this is about 2.8. I was wondering why this looks a little bit weird. So let me fix my units and we'll start this over again. Okay, so first point zero zero is still going to be here. Second point is 2.8, so 2.8 is about right there, and then a pi 12 unit around that eccentric circle, right? Then 4 out and pi over 6, so about there, and then um, 0, no radius, and pi over 3, well it doesn't matter if I spin the point along itself, I'm still going to be, oh I'm not there yet. 2.8 and pi over 4. So now I am here. And then 0 and pi over 3. So even if I spin the circle itself, pi over 3 units, I'm still back to here. So I started there, then I went to there, then I went to here, then I went to here. So this is one complete petal. If I keep going, I'm just going to get another petal somewhere else on the graph. Okay, and I want to find the area inside this petal. So I'm going to use the formula that we have up there, which is one half from alpha to beta. So where I started, which was zero, and where I stopped, which was pi over three. And if I take the difference between these two, that is between zero and pi over two. Um, and then my radius squared. Now my radius is this here. So four sine. Uh, of 3 theta squared d theta. So I get 16 sine squared of 3 theta d theta. Um, that will reduce with the 1 half, so I'll get 8 and then sine squared of 3 theta. And the only way to do this is to do the power reducing formula. So I have 8 and then I have 1 minus cosine of 6 theta, double that, over 2. So if I split up my term here, I'm going to have 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 6 theta, d theta. I integrate um, 1 half, I get 1 half theta. When I integrate this, I get negative one half. Um, the integral of cosine is sine. And if I apply u substitution for this, I will end up having to multiply by a one six. So I actually have, um, if I distribute this eight in and combine these two guys together, so that will be 4 theta minus 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. So then if I evaluate that, I get 4 pi over 3 minus 2 thirds sine of 2 pi minus 0 plus 2 thirds sine of zero. Well, sine of zero is zero, and that should be a zero. So then I just end up with this. Sine of two pi is zero, so we end up with four pi over three. That is the area of one of those petals.